So, is Char here? Char? Hi, EG. Good morning. Ayan. So, hello. Yeah, um, we can start na. So, we'd like to welcome everybody to to um, access Moon Festival General Assembly. So, um, of course, we would like to um, acknowledge the the presence of um, not just um, PACSES board members, but also of our um, good friends. No? Especially, we have here uh, His Excellency Ambassador Chito Santa Romana. Um, and then we um, also have some of our friends. No? Um, especially, we have uh, Cynthia Liang from the, from the Ateneo Confucius Institute, among others. Okay, so uh, before we formally begin, um, I'd like to um, invite uh, Father Ari D to um, start us off with our opening prayer. Father Ari. Thank you, E.G. For our prayer, may I invite you first to a moment of stillness, just to be aware of your surroundings, aware of your posture at this moment. to take a deep breath and do that a few times. And to nurture a spirit of gratitude for being here at this moment, for being able to breathe as we inhale the air. As we exhale, exhale all our stresses, all our worries, all our struggles. Lord God, we praise and thank you for bringing us together this morning, for this day, for our health, for the gift of being able to be present and to gather with our friends and colleagues from PAX. We ask you to bless our gathering, feed us in mind and heart and spirit, that we may be inspired to continue with our quiet work of research, of thinking, of reflecting, and sharing with others. We lift up to you all our loved ones, all our friends, all those near and dear to us who may be struggling at this time, especially with health concerns, or with taking care of those who are sick. And we ask you to bless them with strength and peace for the journey. We lift up to you all our thoughts and actions, and we dedicate this time as a way of building your kingdom here on earth. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Amen. Morning. 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 Okay. Thank you. And uh, good morning, Father Ari. Um, so now um, we would like to um, invite, of course, um, good morning. To, um, to uh, give his um, opening remarks, uh, President of PAX. Uh, Dr. Romel Banlawi. Uh, Sir Romel. Thank you very much, E.G., and thank you very much, Father Ali, for leading us in a powerful opening prayer. Good morning to all. Let me first greet everyone a happy moon festival, especially to our honored uh, members, uh, your excellent Ambassador Chito Santa Romana, and STEAM fellows, uh, Dr. Uh, Wilfredo Villacorta, and uh, I hope uh, Jimmy will catch up uh, very soon later. 
And I also acknowledge the presence of Dr. Bernardita Churchill and Dr. Cynthia Yang for joining us in our gathering today. We traditionally hold our assembly during Moon Festival, also known as Mid-Autumn Festival. This is celebrated not only by people in mainland China, Taiwan, Macau, and Hong Kong, but also by Chinese overseas around the world, including foreign nationalities with Chinese ancestry, like the Chinoy or the Chinese Filipinos. I am so pleased to see all of you, not only to commemorate this festival despite the pandemic, but also to get together as members and friends of PAPS. In this gathering, we want to have more conversations with you in our Kumustahan session later in our program. This event is also an opportunity for us to report to our members and friends about some major innovations that PAPS has done amidst the COVID-19 pandemic as we fulfill our mission of deepening our knowledge of China and Chinese among Filipinos in order to promote mutual understanding and cooperation between Filipinos and the Chinese. You may recall last year, uh, October 2020 to be exact, we launched the Chinese Studies Journal Volume 13 entitled Perspectives on China and the Chinese edited by Dr. Tina Clemente. It was a collection of landmark articles written by noted Filipino scholars and ex experts. Subsequently, we also launched the Chinese uh, Studies Journal Volume 14 entitled Philippines-China Relations at 45 during the COVID-19 pandemic during our General Assembly last February 2021, coinciding with the celebration of the Chinese New Year. I am very pleased to inform all of you that all articles of our PAX Journal are now available for individual download for free at PAX official website, www.pax.ph. So please uh, spend time visiting our website and visit all these publications. Aside from our website, we have also created social media accounts in Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Thanks to our external committee led by Father Ari D and Ms. Ivy Ganadillo for making PACS increasingly visible in social media. And thanks also to our interns for assisting us in our social media works. In fact, this is the first time that Fox accepted uh, internship programs uh, from uh, students. And I would like to uh, mention uh, uh, the following, Christine Deterra, Dave Almosera, Ishan Bautista, Kate Espeleta, Mike uh, Royan, and Shara Divinagracia. I hope I did not uh, uh, leave anybody, but uh, it, this is a ma milestone in PACS because this is the first time that we accepted interns to help us in our work. Please follow and subscribe to PACS social media accounts, not only to be informed, but also to get involved about what PACS have been doing to raise the bar of Chinese studies in the Philippines. PAX is pursuing a major innovation in knowledge production this year by making our Chinese studies journal a peer-reviewed journal. This will level up the quality of our scholarships and academic studies on China, the Chinese in the Philippines, and Philippines-China relations. Thanks to the diligence and devotion of our editorial team, led by Dr. Tina Clemente and Ms. Dar Darlene Estrada, supported by our guest editors, you know, no less than Ambassador Chito Santa Romana, Mr. Jimmy Flor Cruz, and Mr. Eric Bacolinao. Of course, with the strong guidance of our past presidents, Ms. Teresita Angsi, Dr. Ellen Palanca, and Dr. Teresa Carino. I am sure you all miss Professor Aileen Babiera, Professor Aurora Roxy Lim, and Professor Benito Lim in this endeavor, but we continue to pray for the internal repose of their souls. Aside from the Chinese Studies Journal, Fox has also been publishing commentaries of experts and scholars through our viewpoints. Please regularly visit our website for our past and latest pieces on viewpoints. Fox is also pushing boundaries by organizing the webinar series on China's foreign relations. And so far, we have covered cross-strait relations, China-Japan relations, China relations with the Korean Peninsula, China-South Asia relations, China's BRI project in Africa, and China's new Coast Guard law, among others. Our next webinars will be on China-US relations and China-EU relations. And this is very timely in the light 
of the uh, project entered into by Australia, United Kingdom, and the United States for the submarine development of Australia. Aside from our webinar series, PACS will also enter a new territory by launching the PACS podcast called Perspectives. Many thanks to our events committee chair led by uh, our events committee led by Mr. Dyson for these landmark innovations. Some PACS officers and members, especially Mr. Lucio Pitlo III, also presented lectures in various events organized by other like-minded organizations like the Association for Philippines China Understanding, Filipino Chinese Business Club, Confucius Institute, the Federation of Filipino Chinese uh, Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Bahay Chinoy, Kaisa Para Sa Kaunlaran, and Philippine Studies Association, to name a few. So I'm very happy that Dr. Uh, uh, Churchill is here with us. PACS is also actively involved in Ting Tang Dialogue process with our Chinese counterparts. Just last month, PACS held a Ting Tang Dialogue with National Institute for South China Sea Studies and the China Southeast Asian Research Center on the South China Sea in order to promote mutual understanding and cooperation between the Philippines and China in the South China Sea. In addition, three of our members, Mount Tessie, uh, Mr. Jimmy Flor Cruz, and your Surdi, receive an award from APCU and Chinese Embassy for the promotion of Philippines-China understanding. Congrat congratulations to my colleagues. For our internal management matters, we have hired an accounting firm to help us prepare our financial and annual reports to Security and Exchange Commission as part of our juridical obligations. Thanks to our treasurer, Mr. Chelsea Guzman, for initiating this. And as part of our SEC requirements, we also need to update our general information sheet. Thus, our membership or internal committee chaired by Ms. Shar Kua will reach you out for this purpose. We will also be pursuing some changes in our membership system by adding a student membership for undergraduate students while raising the quality of our lifetime membership. Thanks, Shar, for being on, on top of these activities. With the modest fund that we currently have, we will also offer research grants for MA and PhD students preparing their thesis and dissertations, okay, and also supporting rising and established scholars doing research within PACS research agenda. Our research committee will, admin will administer these grants through the decisive leaderships of Dr. Teresita Carino, uh, Teresa Carino and Mr. Paolo Villar. You will hear more about this later in our Kamustahan. I personally thank Ambassador Carlos Chan, our country's special envoy to China, and Chairman Emeritus of the Liwaiwai Corporation, the producer of Uishi, for his generous donations that we continue to use in order to support our current initiatives and innovations. Thank you very much, sir. Because of our current efforts to soar higher in our goals, PACS will hire a special project officer who will help the board manage the internal and external needs of our association. The special project officer will work closely with Ms. Richie Santos, who has been assisting us in administering the PAC Secretariat for more than two decades. Thanks, Richie, for always there for us. Finally, I am very pleased to inform all of you in advance that in 2022, PACS will celebrate our 35th founding anniversary. To commemorate this milestone, we will organize a series of events called PACS at 35 that we intend to launch during our next General Assembly, coinciding with the Spring Festival or Chinese New Year in February 2020. During this series of events, we will hold a research symposium where we will invite our members to present their current research on Chinese studies in the Philippines. Aside from the May 2022 general elections in the Philippines, PACS will also hold the election of our new PACS Board of Directors to cover the term 2022 to 2024. Thus, it will be an election year for all of us in 2022. But meanwhile, let us stay healthy in this time of the pandemic as we celebrate the Moon Festival. You are truly really grateful that one of our board members, Dr. Uh, Tan Cho Chong, will give us a lecture today on wellness and self-care during the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's all for now, and I look forward to a fruitful and productive interactions with all of you. Good morning, 
Sheshe, maraming salamat. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Banlawi. Um, surely there is a lot that, uh, that uh, PACS members will look forward to in the coming years and months, of course, as we launch many of our efforts and um, projects. So now um, I'd like to, um, to um, invite uh, one of PACS's uh, former, uh, former presidents, uh, Dr. Teresa Carino, who will be sharing with us um, not just a story about PACS, but as to why PACS remains um, very important, if not relevant, in our times today. Uh, Dr. Carino? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us as we come together in another General Assembly. And I've been given the pleasant task of speaking about the relevance of PACS in these challenging times. In answer to the question, what is the relevance of PACS today? I would say that PACS is just as, if not more relevant today than when it was founded in 1987. Our goal was, and still is, to develop a better understanding of contemporary China's transformation, its implications for the Philippines and for the Chinese minority in the country. There is no question that the year of our founding was also one of the most turbulent in the Philippines at that time. After the 1986 Edsa revolution and the swearing in of Cory Aquino as president, the new administration was continually challenged by a series of military coup attempts. The, that was the atmosphere in which we resided. The political instability was exacerbated by anti-Chinese sentiments that became politicized and expressed in a spate of kidnappings that did not abate for many years. So between 1992 and 1997, Pax co-produced with Kaisa three volumes on the ethnic Chinese as Filipinos. We see Pax as a channel for raising research standards and professionalism in studies of China, our bilateral ties, and the Chinese in the Philippines. Dialogues, conferences, forums, and publications have been our mainstay. When we look at the long list of books published by PAX, the themes cover a wide range, the economic, political development of China, as well as the history of Philippines-China relations from 1987 to the present. We have produced 14 volumes of the Chinese Studies Journal that track bilateral ties, as well as the progress and challenges in the political integration of the Chinese in the Philippines. I believe these publications serve as important references for students of China and the Chinese. Even as we move forward, in our analysis and progress in our bilateral relations, it is important to take a glance backwards to see how far we have come and how much progress we have made. Such studies are not only relevant, but downright needed to guide us as we try to contribute to ways in which cordial and mutually productive relations with China can be sustained. Over the years, some of the issues remain the same, but the conditions and context have evolved. Today, with China's rise and the intensification of US-China competition, the South China Sea has become the new flashpoint and Southeast Asia, once again, will be the arena of East-West confrontation. Some call it the Second Cold War. Others call it the New Cold Peace. 
On one level, we are a professional association dedicated to improving the quality of our research and publications, raising standards and academic capabilities of scholars, researchers, and enthusiasts. But on another level, we are a community that advocates peace building in the region. We support the development of a Philippine, sorry, we support the development of a Philippine, of an, uh, of a Philippine foreign policy that is independent and representative of the interests of the Filipino people. I see the work of PAX as being extremely relevant, relevant to peace building in the region. This means trying to build understanding and trust between China and the Philippines. It means understanding China and the domestic and international drivers of its behavior and intentions. In the process, we also want the Chinese to understand the Philippines rather than to look at it as a pawn of US imperialism. So what constitutes our peace building efforts? One thing we really need to do is to catch up with China's development. Western media portrayal of China has often stood still for the last 30 years. I remember that only 10 years ago, whenever China was mentioned, a file photo of the iconic image of a man standing next to an army tank in Tiananmen Square was still flashed on the screen. This stands in stark contrast to the real China. At the personal level, I've been visiting China multiple times every year since 1996. And at every visit, I marvel at the new developments that have taken place in terms of infrastructure, improvements, changes in thinking, changes in service, provisions, new gadgets, so on, so on and so forth. The move to a cashless society several years ago left me far behind. I had to learn to carry my phone with me all the time and to contend with restaurants that don't even print menus anymore. Fortunately, fruit vendors and cashiers at neighborhood stores were very patient with me as I still carried cash and coins. So what happens when more than a billion people seek the fruits of modernity? Electricity, cars, ref refrigerators, television, cell phones, advanced technology. Sustainability and equity, along with food and water, are challenged on a vast, indeed, planetary scale. If not enough attention is paid to it, China's resource demands can easily deplete forests and seas along with oil and gas around the world. When Premier Zhu Rongji was interviewed in 2001, he was asked what he thought was China's biggest problem. His answer was, it's people. We have too many people. Everything about contemporary China invites rethinking about what is economic progress and reimagining appropriate and sustainable limits, sustainable limits to growth. In this respect, China's participation in climate change mitigation is urgent and essential. For many developing countries, China's experience in poverty alleviation and green development offer interesting lessons if we care to learn. I was amazed when I recently attended a webinar organized by a think tank in Malaysia on poverty alleviation 
and how we can learn from China. Even though it has lifted more than 800 million people out of abject poverty, the government continues to ensure that people do not fall back into poverty as a result of illness, natural disasters, accidents, or lack of employment. The current rural revitalization movement in the countryside is part of this effort to still do targeted poverty alleviation. They are using technology to enhance this process and have created apps that track people on a cluster of indicators such as health, education and employment. And one of the Chinese scholars mentioned that the indicators are somewhat like a happiness index. So China is coming a long way from the simple instrumentalization of development. On the ecology, the Chinese talk about green mountains and blue waters. This is now very much a part of the Chinese dream to have a beautiful countryside and people living comfortably at middle income levels, waking up to blue skies. Chinese planners and policy makers are acutely aware that it would be impossible and undesirable for China to reach the same consumption levels as developed nations to do so for its 1.4 billion people would need the resources of seven planets. So we have a huge challenge here. Last but not least, I would like to say that PAC's relevance is related to its ability to network with a wide variety of partners. Our partnerships ex have expanded from academe to media, to business organizations and Chinese Filipino organizations such as Kaisa, universities such as UP, De La Salle, Ateneo, Miriam College, PUP, to name a few. They continue to be our key partners. We also partner with the Philippine Academy for Acupuncture and the Confucius Institute at Ateneo. We have partnered with the World News and other media groups to share our commentaries on China and the Chinese. Other NGOs, including PDRC, APPFI, APCU, are in our network. And our network in China includes think tanks, academe, and NGOs. Today, the challenge for China is to channel its economic strength towards being a positive force for change in the world. These days, when we enter into dialogue with Chinese think tanks, I'm aware of how professional they have become with access to scholars and experts that have engaged in multilateral institutions and are graduates of Ivy League universities in the West. We may not be able to match large think tanks in terms of funding, but there is much we can achieve by keeping our eyes and ears to the ground. We have developed networks that reach local communities, whether fisher folks, entrepreneurs, scientists, journalists, diplomats, soldiers and coast guards. It is this growing community that will help define our work, our future reach and our contributions to building peace in the region. Networks of people rather than buildings and institutions will extend our reach and horizons. It is always exciting to be part of PACS. It has brought me on a journey of discovery, learning and fulfillment. Thanks to all of you. And thank you for listening.
Thank you, Dr. Carino, for sharing the PAC story. It has always been the privilege of our generation to hear the history of how PACS was formed and its relevance, especially in today's world. If I may represent the junior members of PACS, we are very grateful to the guidance of our senior members, reminding us in various ways of PACS importance and at the same time, encouraging us to be future contributors to the fields of Chinese studies. Thank you for the trust as we embark the challenges and torch pass on to us as we continue the growth of PACS in the coming years. Thank you, Ma'am Teresa. The next part of our program um, is something quite interesting and unique comparing to the previous Mid Autumn Festival General Assemblies we've had had before. The pandemic really taught all of us to be resilient and adaptive to our environments. If there's anything I miss truly about PAX Mid-Autumn General Assembly is the face-to-face -face dice game we used to have and the get-together of PAX community face-to-face -face and just, you know, do simple kwentuhan. So this GA is quite special because um, we've, we've decided of, uh, instead of doing a virtual dice game, we actually... Um, agreed to a lot time to hear from our PACS community. So the board uh, decided to a lot more time to catch up with each other and just share anything about, you know, about anything. So in this session, we would like to actually hear from, from our fellow members and guests. Um, and you may also raise questions uh, to any of us, to any of the uh, PACS board and members. Uh, to start off, um, actually, I'd like to invite um, Jane, Miss Jane Yugyok Singh, um, Ms. Jane has been uh, very connected with PAX um, in the past years, and as I'm aware of, she actually pursued her PhD in China pre-pandemic. So we were very, very interested also on, on how, what, what Jane would like to share with us on, on her journey being in China and then experiencing the lockdown and everything, coming back home and going back to China. So yeah, Ms. Ms. Jane, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, well, yeah, thank I'm, you. Thank you, Miss Jane. I'm caught, caught off guard. Okay. <laughs> Surprise talaga. Kamustahan. Ah, okay. So, anong sasabihin ko? Uh, wait. Uh, Na-surprise ako, sure. Okay. Wait, when, were, when were you in, ano, maybe we, I can ask you some questions. When, when, when did you um, go to China to pursue your PhD? Uh, it was August, uh, okay, of 2018. So that was, uh, yeah, August of 2018. 2018. Yeah. So you were there when, uh, you know, Feb 2020? Like uh, actually, the... I came back kasi last um, January 2020. So, but before that kasi the whole pandemic issue, when I was in China, oh, sige, kwento na tayo. When I was in China during um, yung mga December, yeah, December 2019, there were rumors already that, you know, there's this virus spreading in Wuhan. But, I was not really aware of it because, uh, you know, because it's just rumors. Lang. But I actually, I was in Wuhan in October. I actually um, presented a paper there in Wuhan. Everything was wow. fine. Everything was okay. It was really nice. We're enjoying the weather. So we just feel that it's just rumors. Lang. And towards the end, when we're about to go home, na, um, actually, we saw a lot of mga, parang military. We don't understand kung ano yun. So, so chika pa rin. Sabi namin, ano to? Then they were saying na, okay, ha, there's going to be a military Olympics. So we saw a lot of parang from America, from Russia, from China, from Korea. All of them are you know, on the airport. Na, kasi um, I was waiting for my turn to go back to uh, Guangzhou that time. So, sabi ko, what's happening? Sabi niya, it's just a uh, no, uh, normal military Olympics. So, then, when I came back na to Tsinan, so everything is okay naman, we celebrated Christmas. Then, I came back for the spring break, January 2020. Then, um, yun, after that, yun, I was stuck here na. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you, were, yeah. you were stuck here already. So, you were here until when, Miss Jane? Till now. <laughs> until now? Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, until now so it's but but when if you decide to go back okay naman their borders um, are open no cuz the situation is that we can like for countries like the philippines we're still under parang red adibas yung natao red code so they do not allow us to go back kasi nga we're a country under red code so countries like korea they're the only ones who are allowed to go back so yung mga naka green na green code so that's yeah and in school also, pag alam nila na your country is red code, uh, you cannot even get a visa. This ah, is okay. 
Okay. So even if you have a pending um, school requirement or school term to finish, you cannot go back? Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's okay. really stuck up. So online lang, pero yeah, it's very hard actually kasi online nga. You can't even see uh, your supervisor and everything. Medyo mahirap. But yes, okay. yes. Wow, yeah. So it's it's nice to hear from from someone like you know like I, I we we also have a board member Miss Ivy she's also in uh, taking her for further studies in Korea so she she's there yeah she's she's there naman so she hasn't returned to Manila yeah I, I actually the good thing so everyone, with Ivy yeah, Sabina uh everything is normal because <laughs> she's there but it's still different but online. Yes, yes. Yeah, I heard I heard also like last week lang. I actually this week lang shaman's cases went up. So yeah. I I have a friend who who said um the shaman government actually implemented antigen testing every two days. So every other day. Um so, yeah. yeah. Do they do that also in Guangzhou? Uh yeah, because I have a few friends that are still there. You know, I, I always think that it's good. Because even though there's just one cases, like I have a friend who's actually working there already in Adidas. So in their community, only one person got, parang suspected pa that the, uh, the person got COVID. But it's the whole compound that was already uh, parang given a test. So it's really a prevention thing. Unlike, yeah, unlike sa atin, medyo kulang. Yeah. yeah, the contract tracing actually in China is quite um, good, no? Everyone, I think, agrees to that. Yeah, thank you, Miss Jane, for sharing your story. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Miss Jane. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you in person yeah. when when the pandemic is better. Same, same here. Okay, keep it keep safe, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I'd like to I'd like to call in Paulo. Paulo is actually our um, person in charge for research committee. He'd like to uh to share some details about the research grant. Actually, I think it's a good way uh, to to introduce some of the um, basic details. So, baka maybe our our guests, some most of them are students. They might be interested to ask some questions. Paolo. Good morning, Shar. Hi, Paolo. Um, EG, yeah, request ko lang ng screen share so para mi vi ano. Uh, we would have visuals. When I briefly, very brief, discuss discussion of the grants. So good morning to everyone. So we would just like to share the very first launch of the Pax Research Grants. It's just three: uh, the thesis publication grant, dissertation grants, and senior research fellowship. So we, us coming from the research committee, committee, we would like to support those who have been researching on China and the Chinese and give them incentive with regards to sharing their expertise and sharing their know-how with regards to these topics. So if you or members of the uh, PACs are interested, you can apply. So the, the guidelines are uploaded in the PACs website and the themes are there, the forms are there, so we are formally launching this call for research grants and we hope that we could um, seek for your support in sharing or, and disseminating these kinds of information so that we can continue the good work of PAX. So I think that's enough, Shar. Um, they can get all the information from the website. So I'll just post the link on the, web, uh, on the Zoom chat. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, Paolo. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something... Um... Uh, something to look forward you to as uh, Sir Romel have shared with us this morning. Um, siguro for the for the last sharing, I, I'd like to to call in one of the interns of PAX. Um, internship is also one of the pioneer projects we've had, had recently. Um, it would be good to hear also from our intern. Uh, is Dave, Dave, is Dave there? Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Hi, Dave. Well, good morning. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is it okay? You, yeah. Um, yeah. You can you can share your experience. Oh, your short other life. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, first off, uh, good morning to everyone, and uh, sobrang happy po kami with with my fellow interns that Pax was able to accept us as the first interns of uh, the organization. 
Uh, and one of the greatest things po na we've did, we did is actually all actually attending the weekly webinars it, because it actually provides the necessary nuances that we actually needed to to build as a stronghold as for our course po, especially for our ano, upcoming fourth year we actually needed to create thesis so with those necessary information we would be parang easily able to create prob- probable thesis po na in line with this so yun po Ah, very nice. So, kamusta naman? Uh, did the PAX give you a difficult time or too much work or everything is manageable? Everything was manageable po. That was another good thing with PAX kasi even though it is it is online setup, uh, we, man- we, we were able to fare up with the task and uh, Mama Ivy along with Father Ari was, was very, ano naman po, was very... Uh, not not really that strict when it comes to the tasking and they gave they gave us a lot of time and they gave they gave us a, a lot of free will uh doing our task na parang it's not really that strict na parang you do this you do that but they also ask our uh inputs if is it really that good ba parang we're okay po ba siya for our postings nice 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 to hear that dave thank you ah thank you for sharing your your insights and your experience yes, um thank you. Thank you. Yeah, maybe this time we can also, you know, we we the floor is open for for any questions everyone would might have to to Pax or also to His Excellency uh, Ambassador Chito Santa Romana. Um, and while we while we gather your questions, can we hear also from Dr. Villa Corta, Dr. Villa Corta, um, our honorary fe- uh, fellow for Pax. It's nice to see you, sir, here. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. <clears throat> Hi, Dr. Villacorta. Would you want to share something, Po? Yeah. Uh, I would like to read from a prepared speech because I have health issues now and uh, I have trouble with my fingers. Go ahead, Po, Dr. V. Give me a few seconds. Sure, I didn't know you call me this soon. <laughs> but of course, you prefer the younger people first, no? <laughs> Not really, Dr. Villacorta. <laughs> ones... You want to save the best for last. <laughs> the older ones will follow me. Anyway, oh yes. Uh It's not part of my uh, talk, but uh, I was given five minutes for my talk, by the way, so don't worry. Um, I just want to congratulate uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Teresa. Uh, Many of you uh, perhaps do not realize that it was Teresa who founded Pax. Uh, She was the first head of, or what do you call the position, Teresa, director of PAX. We hired her at De La Salle University when I was dean. And she was in charge of uh, Chinese uh, studies first. Then her um, um, functions uh, um, expanded. Teresa is a Singaporean. She still is one because Singapore does not allow its uh, citizens to change their citizenship. If I'm, is that correct, Teresa? She married. Um, she married a um, Filipino at distinguished uh, Filipino pastor leader of the uh, Protestant schools and churches in the Philippines and uh, the the late Feli Feliciano Carito. I mentioned that because uh, it it takes someone who understands uh, Southeast Asia and coming from the leading country in Southeast Asia to uh, appreciate the importance of an organization like PAX. 
Now, anyway, I just wanted to commend her and to inform uh, our young um, members here what we owe to this Singaporean graduate of one, if not the best uh, grade school, high school, raffle school in Singapore. And uh, National University of Singapore and uh, the UP. So she's Filipino at heart, Singaporean too, and, and uh, understanding um, uh, student of uh, Chinese history and culture. Uh, now, uh, I was invited by by um, <clears throat> who was the one who invited me? Uh, I was invited. <laughs> was it Risa or or? Um, that's a trouble when you have uh, an old man uh, as one of your speakers. No, it was, it was uh, uh, Romel and Teresa, both of them. Anyway, they asked me to give a five minute talk well, it will be shorter than that. Uh, I was just going to tell you that uh, for the past one and a half months, I have been in voluntary isolation, declining invitations for talks and interviews. I was diagnosed as uh, I, I was uh, diagnosed as having shown early symptoms of Parkinson's disease or PD. My neurologist who's placed me under medication therapy until now uh, assured me that uh, it's part of aging. And uh, of course, I want the second opinion from the expert in uh, traditional and modern medicine for, uh, for such uh, ailments. And we have him here at PAX, uh, Dr. Tan. I hope one of these days he'll find time to, to be consulted. By Dr. Him. Tan will share with us a, a yeah, short yes. talk for in a while, Dr. Oh, Villacorta. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, have... It's good to hear you to hear from you, po, Dr. Villacorta, after yeah. a long time. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to say also na tatanungin ko ito mga atinista, maswerte nyo kami ngayon na ang PAX ay uh, ang insight na ngayon ay Ateneo. <laughs> And uh, yes, uh, from La Salle to Taneo. Well, we're friends, no, no problem about that. But uh, for... I would like to give you some tips from, from your Lolo Minito. Do you have tips? Uh, what are the considerations na paalala ko lang sa kabataan ng mga apo ko kayo? No? You're old enough to be my apo. Young enough to be my apo. Uh, my fingers trigger jumps because of my health condition. Dr. Villacorta. So anyway, uh, yeah. 
uh, there's some technical problems here. So yes. uh, let's go on to the next speaker. Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Villacorta, for sharing your story. To say uh, hello to, you, to all of you. Thank you. Nice thank to see you, you sir. Yes, um, just to, before we end our Kamustahan session, um, may we request uh, His Excellency Ambassador Chito Santa Romana? Ambassador? Uh, yes, yes. Hi, po. Can you hear me? Hi, po. Yes. Okay. How are you, po, Ambassador? Uh, <laughs> How are the Filipinos, po, in China? Well, okay, naman. Um, the pro it's actually safe here. You know, they have the COVID under control, but there are sporadic um, spread of, of Delta variant. And, and I wanted to add on my experience at Xiamen because I just came from Xiamen. There was a international fair for investment and I had to go there and represent the Philippines on behalf of Secretary Ramon Lopez. Because as Jane explained, even for top officials, close um, visas, <laughs> the Chinese borders are still closed. They're very selective. So this is a problem not only for, for Jane, for students. There are actually over more than 500, uh, almost a thousand Filipinos stuck outside, back, back home in Manila. Kasi umuwi sila noong February 2020, hindi na nakabalik dito. No? And they've been trying to come back and it's part of the work we're trying to do to facilitate that. Probably pag, uh, near the end of the year, when China hits the uh, hits the herd immunity, it's possible to loosen up a bit. And particularly as we head towards the Winter Olympics and possibly certainly after that. If the situation under control. But just to give you an idea, I was in Xiamen from, well, September 7 to the 10th. And on the day I left, there was only one case in Xiamen. But the next day, like in 20, like in 30, like in 40, and then finally they had to declare a lockdown in Xiamen. And of course, since I came from there, up to now, actually, I've been subjected to a home quarantine <laughs> so as not to spread. That's why I, I have the time now. <laughs> Thanks wow, to, it's, to it's be our pleasure. You because... <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully today is the last day and next week I'll be able to go back to the office. I've been working from home. But but the question you asked me, you texted me, a no role. Of PACs in the, Pax coming in the coming years. I, 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 I wholeheartedly support you, what Teresa has said. Ang gusto ko lang idagdag, given the developments of the past, actually the past month, uh, PACs will play a, bit, a, a bigger role in so far as trying to understand China, where it's going, and also the implications for Philippine China relations. No? You have the, the Quad meeting in Washington today, you have the Australia submarine controversy just the past week. Uh, and then you have this whole pandemic, you have the UN session, all of this. And you'll have the Philippine election next year. And for those of you who follow the Chinese media, you probably saw the article by uh, a, a Chinese scholar who, who was in, UP Asian Center just a couple of years ago. I know him personally, Sili Kai Shang, calling the Philippine Declaration on the on the Australia submarine deal. I mean, criticizing it basically. But anyway, the point I'm making is that there is a greater need and greater relevance for PACs to explain the situation, the, the issues, to understand the situation. As far as I'm concerned, and I think in terms of foreign policy, it's the challenge is how to find. As we, as we proceed with our independent foreign policy is how to find a balanced approach between the US and China, maintaining their good relations with China, but maintaining also the historical relations with the US and how to navigate in a skillful way the situation that we are facing right now, because I think we will see more of this um, controversial issues in the years to come. So that's why I, I think uh, PACs will play a more relevant role in the years to come, in the coming years, and it becomes a challenge for all of us to intensify the research and to understand the situation 
better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Chito. Thank you for your uh, service to, to our nation overseas. I'm sure it is, it's very, very challenging. Um, okay, uh, so our next part of uh, our program, um, as Dr. Villacorta mentioned, Dr. Tan a while ago, we've had the pleasure of inviting Dr. Tan, uh, who is also one of the board members of FACS, to share with us more about wellness and self-care in this time of COVID. Dr. Tan, are you there? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I get those friends here. Lord. Thank you. Yes. Do you see my do you see my slide? My my PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So our ambassador Chito, Dr. B. Uh, Mom Teresa, Mom Tessie, <laughs> and uh, our president, uh, uh, Romel, and friends and colleagues in, in Paxson. I wish everybody good health and happiness. So my topic today is will be on natural health and how to enhance our immunity. Okay, In this kind, in this uh, COVID, uh, I'm sorry. But in this uh, in this uh, pandemic, you can see in this uh, picture, uh, patients are in emergency room, and you see patients nine uh, patients are waiting in emergency room. Okay, in our country, practically in the whole Metro Manila, all the uh, practically all the hospital beds are being occupied, and patients are are making pila in emergency room. Okay. And so. Uh, and so way back in 100 years ago, we have uh, the mortality in our country was uh, 90,000. Okay? And as, as of yesterday, the mortality was, uh, was 37,000. That is the official figure. But in actuality, I think it should be more. So we are actually already near the 45,000 or the midway of the 90,000 mortality 100 years, 100 years ago. So in this kind of a crisis, a pandemic crisis, I think the best way that we can do is really prevention. So an ounce of prevention is better than cure, okay? So it's very important, okay? Now, uh, the father of uh, medicine, Dr. Hippocrates, uh, uh, stated that let foods be thy medicine. And even earlier, thousands of years ago, the practitioners of traditional Chinese medicine already advocated the use of herbal medicine as uh, for the health maintenance. Okay. And uh, diseases enter through the mouth, enter through the mouth. Okay. So as you can see in this picture, uh, the unhealthy foods, obesity, hypertension, and other diseases, all of this uh, enter through the mouth because of the unhealthy food. Again, a picture of unhealthy food. Now, this is a slide showing to us the different uh, healthy foods the green leafy vegetables and the, the fruits, these are all healthy foods for our, for our health maintenance. Mm -hmm. Now, before I go into these fruits, uh, these fruits and foods, I would like to, to make special mention about virgin coconut oil. A virgin coconut oil is from coconut, it's a fruit, okay? It's a kind of fruit. And uh, uh, this is very relevant nowadays because of the de Department of uh, Science and Technology already has uh, initial findings uh, uh, showing to us that uh, virgin coconut oil is effective at least in the initial or in the mild cases of, uh, of COVID. So the recommended dosage is that two tablespoons three times a day. So for, for practical purpose for, for us, if, uh, we have, uh, if you're suspecting flu-like symptoms, fever, we can already start with uh, virgin coconut oil which is uh, readily av available in supermarket and, uh, and nearby stores, okay? So virgin coconut oil, it's a health food that can be good in, uh, in COVID-19, okay? And you see uh, the, the different 
fruits and fruits, vegetables, they are, they are rich in different vitamins. So this avocado is one, it's good. It, uh, it, is, uh, it is rich in chlorophyll and it's anti-inflammatory and there's different kinds of vitamins. And uh, one is the ampalaya. Ampalaya, we know ampalaya is, uh, is a bitter in taste. It's good for in, in lowering the diabetes. As we know, high sugar will, dec will, will, be, uh, will decrease one's immunity. And for patients with diabetes, it's a kind of, uh, of comorbidity, which will lower our resistance. So taking ampalaya in, in normal individuals and more so for patients with diabetes is very important. And another is taro. Taro is also an, a good food huh, with rich in vitamins. Okay. And ampalaya can be cooked in different ways. Okay. Then, the uh, moringa, which is uh, uh, which is uh, no, uh, in in Tagalog, uh, we call it uh, malunggay. Uh, no? In malunggay, it's uh, we can make use of this. Uh, we can easily plant it at our backyard, uh, no? at home. Okay? It uh, it's good for that for uh, for anemia, uh, no? And uh, it's green leafy. We can make use of this as uh, some salad, uh, no? And also for our soup. And papaya is also one rich in vitamin A. Okay, it's an it is antioxidant. Mm -hmm. And uh, tawa tawa is a, is a, it's it's antiviral. Mm -hmm. It's good for it's good for dengue. In fact, uh, some studies uh, and some many uh, big medical centers in our in our country are already conducting studies of the on the use of tawa tawa in dengue fever. In dengue. And uh, since uh, dengue is a viral disease, if we make use of dengue, hopefully, if we make use of tawa tawa, hopefully it can also be of help in, in treating uh, COVID. Okay? Then celery, another green leafy vegetables. Okay? Apis is also one. Okay? And uh, talong is also one. It's, um, it's good for the brain. It's rich in fibers and also other vitamins. And onion is also one. It's a onion. Ginger, one well, we can ginger. Ginger is good. Uh, we can make it into ginger, ginger juice. I know ginger drinks and uh, as beverage. And for people with uh, with uh, with joint pain, ginger is good. Uh, it's an anti-inflammatory, good for arthritis. Okay, we can make it into juice. Um, and then radish. Uh, radish, of course. Uh, uh, it's well known in achara, no? but we can also um, make a radish juice. It's anti-inflammatory. It will also uh, enhance our our immunity. So radish, and of course, lagundi is already uh, a well known uh, a herbal medicine. It's good for cough and asthma, and uh, there are some studies ongoing on its role in uh, its role in COVID. So we have no evidence, uh, we have no no final uh, results yet, but uh, there are already some evidences uh, uh, to to claim that it's effective or it's helpful in the treatment of uh, of COVID nineteen. Okay, so and you know, those carrots is also another. Hmm? So you can see that. Uh, so you can see that all these substances that are readily available in the market, they are natural food natural fruits and vegetables and uh, the, our, the immune cells of the body okay, the lymphocytes the neutrophil etc all of them they need these uh, fruits and these foods in order to nourish the cells to enhance the immunity and also the uh, uh, the environment of this of the of this uh, uh, immune cells will be uh, uh, will will enhance uh, will will be improved with this uh, all the all the food substances that I mentioned earlier because of the because they contain a lot of vitamins and also the micronutrients. So, so you can see the role of micronutrients in in, in our immune system. So it's very important that we take this uh, green leafy vegetables and fruits to enhance our maybe to enhance our our immunity. Now, next, I would like to talk about is uh, 
is fish oil or omega-3? Omega-3 is well known to be effective in uh, enhancing our, in, in our memory. It's good in prevention of, of, the, of, of uh, dementia. It's also good in lowering the cholesterol and it's good also for, for the heart. And uh, studies also show that the omega-3 is also a very good substance that can be used in the treatment of, uh, that will enhance our immunity. And probiotic is also something nowadays, the probiotic is uh, becoming, uh, uh, is, uh, the role of probiotic and its significance is being, uh, uh, being uh, emphasized in the medical field, okay? Probiotics uh, uh, is very good that, and probiotics actually are healthy bacteria, okay? So if we, if we take in probiotics, we are actually taking in bacteria. But probiotics are healthy bacteria. So if we take in probiotic, pro, it will, number one, it will maintain the integrity of the intestine and the colon. So it will prevent the toxic substances from entering our body. And uh, it will also enhance our immunity. So probiotic is something that we have to take in. And uh, there are also studies showing that the probiotic will slow down the uh, progression or deterioration of, uh, of, an, of, uh, of Parkinson's disease. These, uh, these studies uh, uh, were being reported in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the International Convention on Movement Disorder. Okay, so this could be something that can be a good news for, for Dr. B, okay? So, and also kimchi. Kimchi is uh, kimchi contains a lot of uh, probiotic. So for for some of us who are very who would like to eat uh, hot and spicy food, kimchi is it's a good thing. Okay, and of course the prebiotic. The prebiotics are those. Uh, in other words, prebiotics are those vegetables, the fruits that I mentioned earlier, and they are they serve as the nutrients for the for the probiotics. Okay. So if we take uh, those uh, fruits and vegetables, then we are enhancing the healthy bacteria in the intestine, which is good for our health and immunity. And of course, uh, uh, cigarettes. Uh, cigarettes uh, contain uh, more than 100 kinds of toxic substances. So uh, we should avoid uh, cigarette smoking. And one more thing I would like to mention is uh, red wine. Red wine is healthy. It helps prevent the stroke and also it's good for the heart. So drinking maybe maybe 50 cc or 100 cc of uh, red wine a day, it's good for the heart and also for the memory. It prevents heart disease. Okay. And the coffee, hmm? coffee is good, okay? Drinking coffee, of course, uh, uh, unless one has, uh, one has uh, some idiosyncratic uh, reactions towards coffee, like palpitation or anxiety. If one doesn't experience those uh, uh, bad effects of coffee, one can take it. And actually drinking a few cups of coffee is good for the memory. And it's also good for Parkinson's disease. And of course, uh, so, uh, also, if one can tolerate uh, coffee, the coffee is good for the brain. Okay, a uh, green tea is also good. It enhances one's. Uh, it will enhance it. It has antibactericidal effect. It will kill bacteria, and uh, also, of course, it will be helpful in the fight against the uh, uh, against the virus. Okay, and this is a study. If you look at the, if you look at the, if you look at the right side, okay. The incidence of heart disease, cancer, and uh, other diseases are lower with the intake of uh, with chronic intake of uh, of, uh, of green tea. Okay, so this uh, shows to us that the green leafy vegetables and uh, fruits are good for our health. They enhance our our immunity, and this is of particular importance in this kind of. Uh, COVID uh, pandemic and crisis. One thing is that uh, is sunlight. Huh? Well, sunlight is a free is a free thing being given to us by God. Okay, so uh, in this COVID uh, uh, crisis, when we 
we don't like to go out, but we can just get near our our windows or just uh, outside our door. We can uh, try to be exposed to sunlight, maybe 30, 30 minutes a day. Sunlight will be good and to enhance, uh, increase the vitamin D, which is good in our immunity. And sunlight will also increase the serotonin of the brain, which is good, which is a kind of happy hormone for the brain. So it's good for us physically and also mentally. Okay. So these are the health, the benefits of uh, of uh, of sunlight. And of course, exercise is very important. Exercise nowadays, uh, many people are are being uh, being uh, iso are uh, are withdrawn or isolated at home. So we should try to do exercise at home. Exercise will reduce our blood pressure. Will of course uh, reduce lower the blood sugar cholesterol of our body and it will also enhance the immunity so a mild exercise is very important so don't forget to do exercise for at least 30 minutes a day so well, minimal or moderate exercise is good but uh, severe exercise is not good because too much exercise will also be will lower our immunity so moderate exercise maybe 30 minutes of uh, of uh, maybe stationary walking, jogging, or some jumping at home, okay, it will be good to enhance our our memory. Well, uh, no, it will enhance our immunity. Now, if you look at this, uh, uh, of course, this is in Chinese and Japanese, okay. Now, uh, there you can see that the peak of our immunity is at the age of thirty and twenty. As we, as we reach, as a person reaches the age of 40 until, uh, until uh, elderly age, the immunity will go down. So this, uh, this shows to us that the more that we have to take in this uh, healthy sub food substances and also exercise. Ex uh, stress is something we have to avoid, try to avoid stress, because stress will stimulate uh, unhealthy hormones in our body. And this unhealthy hormone will uh, unhealthy uh, I'm sorry sir. I'm sorry I... uh, Dr. Tan yeah I yes yeah thank you yeah you're you're done with the presentation talk not yet, not yet, ah, not okay, yet. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I'll try to go back to my. I'll go back to my. Okay, Pa. Hmm. Sorry for the interruption. So, 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 uh, on the back, on, on. So, I think some things. Dr. Tan, is it okay to share your uh, yeah. PowerPoint to our members? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I can, I can share, okay. I can share them, yes. Yeah. I think it's not the PowerPoint is not showing. Oh, so uh, there the stress so slide. Yeah, now you it can see it. So yes. stress will lower. So try to uh, avoid stress or try to to minimize our stress. Okay, and then adequate uh, adequate sleep is very important. Do you see no. Dr. Tan? I think we've lost your share screen. Oh yes. Um 
Okay, yeah. let's talk. You can maybe. Uh, I can, I can. So, so adequate. So, do you see it? Adequate sleep is very important. Sleep will be sleep is a kind of anti-stress. It's anti-stress and it will enhance our immunity. And one thing is a chi gong. Okay, tai chi is excess good. Okay, practicing tai chi, chi gong. Okay, and deep breathing exercise. Deep breathing exercise is very important. We don't to be a, have to be an expert in chi gong, but we can just uh, dip in, uh, breathe in and out, and maybe. 20 times uh, every night, uh, maybe four or five minutes every day, every hour, this will be a very good to increase the lung capacity and also to increase the oxygen level in the body. So, so Qigong is, uh, is anti-stress, it will enhance the immunity. Okay? So deep breathing exercise. Meditation also one, the meditation, if we, if we meditate, if we relax, okay, if we relax, then also the stress level will be down. Okay, the anti-stress hormone will will be enhanced. Okay, so so if we meditate, we if we achieve stillness, we will be closer to God. So and studies show that uh, nutrition and physical activities and plus qigong, all of this will enhance our immunity. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Maybe. Excuse me, uh, yes. Dr. Tan. Um, yeah, I think we're we're almost. Um, oh yeah, maybe um, give me one minute. <laughs> so, sure, sure. So go ahead. So so we can say that in uh, uh, in this COVID pandemic, it's not just the pandemic of uh, infectious disease. It's also a pandemic of uh, mental health. Hmm? So in, in this time, we have to stay connected with our friends. Okay, and uh, keep busy. Okay, and uh, do exercise. And uh, that would be good, not only for us physically, but also mentally. So that's all. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank Bye -bye. you, Dr. Thank Tan. Bye-bye. EG? Yes, hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay. There, okay. So... So um, thank you, Dr. Tan, for for your uh, very very helpful presentation and very timely, no, uh, regarding our own health, our personal health, and our wellness, especially in these um, um, challenging times. So to perhaps help lighten our mood and to um, and to make us happier, if you would, uh, I I I would like to invite a, a special guest no who we all know and we all love him um and he'll be performing for us today so with that i would like to um invite our dear friend in Pax and of course one of our uh, fellows uh mr jaime flor cruz sir jimmy hello everyone so um do you see me um just to inject uh, another note of um, wellness in this uh, time of um, moon festival. So I'd like to uh, offer this song, uh, the Filipino version of Yueliang uh, Daibiao Wa Um It's my Salin Awit version. Um, the advantage of uh, the pandemic is you have time to um, extra time for uh, a vocation like translating. So this one I've done a few, several weeks ago and uh, I'd like to offer it to all of you. Shandale. Is it not playing? I'm using at karaoke. Oops. Don't 
tanong mo ay mahal ka ba? Gaano ka sinta? Sinta ko'y tapat, sinta ko'y tatag sa lamin ng buwan ang damdamin. Tanong mo ay mahal ka ba? Kaano ka sinta? Sinta ko'y wagas, sinta ko'y tunay sa lamin ng buwan ang damdamin. Dampi lang ng labi, kinikilig pusong sabik, mahalang matimtim, di malimot tulog gising. Tanong mo ay mahal ka ba? Gaano ka sinta? Pag-isipan mo, pagmasdan mo ito sa labin ng buwan ang damdami. So ito na siguro ang pinaka-popular na awiting Chino na pinasikat ni Teresa Dunn at kinanta ng marami pang mga awit, maraming versions. Nilapa, nilapitan ko, nilapatan ko ito ng titik Pilipino at ganito na nga ang naging bunga. Dampi, dampi. Lang ng labi kinikilig pusong sabik mahal ang matimtim di malimot tulog gising tanong mo mahal ka ba kaano ka sinta ni chi siang ni siang ni chi kan ni kan yue liang dai bia wo di xin pa gi si pan mo pa mas Dan mo ito sa lamin ng buwan ang damdami. Bravo! Thank you, thank you. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> that's, that's, so, <laughs> that's so wonderful. A rendition. No? Uh, Thank we, you. Uh, we uh, hope to hear it soon in our Spotify and our <laughs> and our other services. No? So, uh, Sir Jimmy, I think we've just received a, a message if you could do an encore. Maybe oh. of on a, do you have another song okay. in mind? I have another song I just finished translating recently and it It's very familiar to all of you. And I have the Chinese, I mean, the Filipino version of Moli Hua, Sampagita. Okay. What do Oh, Sampagita. Ay ganda. Teka. Oh, oh. Sandali ha. Maikli lang naman to. 
Kay ganda, kay ganda. O isang pagita, kay ganda, kay ganda. Isang tangkay ay namumukad na. Puti na mahalin mo yak pa lahat ay hanga. Nais ko ay pitasin ka sana nang ialay sa sinisita. Sampagita o sampagita. Teka, ito na nga. Sorry ha. Sorry ha. Sampagita kay ganda, kay ganda. O sampagita kay ganda, kay ganda. Sang tangkay ay namumukad na. Puti na mahalin mo yak pa lahat ay hanga. Nais ko ay pitasin ka sana. Nang maialay sa sinisinta Sampagita O Sampagita So yun na yun Medyo hilaw pa Pero I think magugustuhan nyo At kakantahin nyo I love it I love it po Sir Jimmy Thank you Thank you Sir Jimmy Thank you this it's our first time to to hear Molly Hua sang in uh in a Filipino. <laughs> yes. Tama. Uh, isang bulaklak, iba-ibang pangalan pero pareho rin. Kahit na anong kultura, um gustong-gusto natin siya. <laughs> okay. So thank you, thank you again to uh, Sir Jimmy for uh, gracing us with, with his not just his wonderful voice, no, but also his uh, very well done translations. No? Um, so, um, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this very brief GA. I I, I would like to thank, of course, um, Char for uh, being my uh, co-host in today's um, Moon Festival General Assembly, and of course, our different um, pleasure, speakers. Eg. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, our speakers and, and uh, those who uh, shared with us uh, a, a thing or two about um, about a, or, or, or rather during our Kumustahan. So now, um, before I just formally end, um, I think we just have a few announcements no, coming from for, um, again, as a preview as to what PAX has to offer next or in in the future okay so uh the first one oh sorry um let me just here share some there can you see the the keynote presentation black black palang. maybe next right. slide uh there
also, of course, again, we are going to launch the Perspectives podcast coming soon. Um, so please look out for that on Spotify. And also, of course, as was mentioned earlier, will be the PAX Research Grants, which will be uh, which we have already launched today. And of course, something to look forward to is PAX at 35, right? Um, which uh, more announcements will be coming very soon. Okay. So um, with that, I guess, um, on behalf of the Philippine Association for um, Chinese Studies, we would like to thank everyone for taking the time to um, join us in today's General Assembly. Um, we look forward to seeing you again in our future webinars and our future events. And, and with the different um, events and um, initiatives that we have already planned, right? We hope that you would also not just join us in our webinars, but more so if you could contribute as well to viewpoints or to, um, to uh, CSJ. And of course, if you wish or you have something burning inside you which you want to share, then of course, the podcast is always another avenue for that. Okay, so with that, thank you everyone. And maybe before we end, maybe um, we could take a group photo for uh, those who are still here. Okay, so if you're available, please turn on your cameras. Okay. Okay, so if everyone's ready, we will take a picture in three, two, one. Okay, so there, so we've taken our picture already. So again, thank you everyone for um, coming. Uh, we we um, hope everyone has a wonderful lunch and a wonderful day. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Take care. Stay safe, you. everyone. Dr. Argyo, and thank you, Dr. Tan, for the lecture. Thank, thank you, Dr. Thank you very much. God bless you and stay safe. Thank you. Bye -bye.